Gatorade knows there's no one path an athlete takes to unlock their true greatness. For DK Metcalf, greatness starts with the early morning grind, going hard when everybody else wants to quit. For world record-breaking track star Sydney McLaughlin, it's all about setting a goal and working hard every day to shatter it. And for Jason Tatum, greatness starts with giving everything to live up to the legends that came before him. Whatever path you take to greatness, Gatorade is there to help you fuel it because greatness starts with G. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, the podcast. Feel it in the air. Bart Scott came in this morning with his new tennis shoes on, his new Trapper Keeper. I got my new book bag. Got my fresh pencils. It's like the first day of school because NFL training camps are opening all over the place. We have the Cowboys, the Steelers. I'm all on uh, key desk, the, disrespecting key desk. If you want, well, you know what? I, I'm going to sign this book, too. Right? Out there. Throw me the damn ball. That'd be amazing. You should just, you know, just pop that signature right on the front cover, or do you do it on the inside cover to see if he opens this book? Yeah, I'm a, no, I'm going to put it on the front. I'm going to put uh, Silver Sharpie. Okay, I'm, I'm in for that. Training camp report dates for veterans. Cowboys and Steelers, July 21st. We just had it up there. It is finally that time. Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin, presented by Progressive Insurance on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM, Channel 80. Uh, we're all over the place. ESPN News. I'm Jason Fitz, sitting with Bart Scott. We're in for the crew today and tomorrow. And, you know, when you start to get to this point, Bart, it's it, the excitement just – it changes. Everything changes. Like, usually – the NBA schedule has run differently. So we've all sort of been waiting patiently, as patiently as we can to get to this point. But the opening of training camp is that moment that really feels like the kickoff of the season of hope. If you're a fan, this is the moment where you're sitting back saying, no, this is the year. It's going to be different. Optimism. If you can't be optimistic now, like when can you be, right? Like this is it. Now, I am. we do have beef though, Bart. I'm just realizing that players were sleeping on. Like I didn't hear Derek Carr's name. I didn't hear... You know, Max Crosby's name, Yannick Ngakwe. Like, he had a lot of chance to get some Raiders love in for me. But I, I did. But, it, you know, all that was predicated on them getting uh, Russell Wilson or getting uh, maybe huh. maybe uh, one, say, a a hmm. Huh. Yeah, we'll continue that beef as the morning goes on. Uh, I'm not the only one excited. Uh, Bart's not the only one excited. Jerry Jones particularly excited. Talked a little bit about pre- at his press conference about his love of the Cowboys and what it means to be in this moment. I'd do anything known to man to get in a Super Bowl. That's a fact. But the thing that means the most to me and I care about, and I could probably be anywhere in the world I want to be right now, I want to be here uh, with our team. You ever get emotional like that coming into the first day of Camp Park? No, not at all. But, you know, Jerry can do that. Jerry's world understands that the, the time is running out in the hourglass for him to have an opportunity to win another Super Bowl. It's been a long time since Jerry has has been able to, to host a Lombardi trophy, and I think he's trying to get there. And, listen, he's shown tremendous discipline, right, because we know he won a Kyle Pitts. We know that's a, a classic Jerry move. He's been patient. He goes with Michael Parson, understanding that that defense is, 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 is horrible, and he went all in. He's starting to listen to other people. But Jerry, he's itching. I mean, on the one hand, I sit there and say, you know, you're right. It has been a long time. Then the other hand, I think there, I, I represent the voice of a lot of fans that are sitting there saying, you think it's been a long time for the Cowboys. Like, if you're a Browns fan, you're looking around saying, I got no sympathy for Jerry Jones. Like, how long has it been? Like, if you're a Jets fan. Yeah. Fan, if you're, I yeah. mean, for me, as a Raiders I'm fan, I say what the Ravens got too, and they call themselves to really <laughs> people believe that the Ravens are the Browns. I mean, that, so they celebrated that way. That is, that's about the only thing you can do, right? At that point, I, so we've talked a lot about players, but you know, obviously, there's also this focus on teams. Like Bart, are there certain teams other than my beloved Raiders that you're really like interested, really excited to see coming into this season? I'm telling you, like, I really, I'm really excited to see what Matthew Stafford is going to do out there. Right. I mean, you you give him a good coach, a great offense, the number one defense in the league last year, coming back, giving him short fields, opportunities. He's only had in his career, you know, eight games in which he had a hundred yard rusher. Now, I know Cam Akers going down really hurt. But listen, it's it's veteran options out there and it's options via trade. You think about a team like the Houston Texans that has a surplus of of running backs. Hey, they can pick up old Mark Ingram from Houston. I'm sure they'll give him up. Right. You you, you look at, you know, maybe the, the New York Jets that have a bunch of draft picks and got good players. I think they're going to be really, really, really good out there. And I think Matthew Stafford's going to show everybody what type of quarterback he is, that he is a top 10 quarterback. You know, it's funny. You, you mentioned the Jets there for a second. I, I would actually take the other side of this. Like the Panthers, to me, are interesting. And I, I don't know if the Panthers are going to be good. I don't think any of us really know that right now. 
But it is at least interesting to see where Sam Darnold is oh, yeah. at this point. And, and there's been some significant moments for the Panthers to basically go all in. You know, I, I realize that everybody says psyche shouldn't matter, but in my life experience, psyche matters to really successful people. And it doesn't mean they can't be successful. So I'm looking at Sam Darnold as somebody that one. goes to a new organization. Now that organization has said, hey, I believe in you. And by the way, that organization in the early part of last year exceeded expectations. Matt Rule uh, took a couple of years to get his culture brought in at Baylor. I'm sure that's going to take a little time uh, with, with the Panthers as well. And then you stack onto that Christian McCaffrey. Like I think yeah. what they're trying to build in Carolina is at least interesting to look at because, frankly, they've taken the risk on Sam Darnold. And at some point, this is sort of the make-or-break-it moment for him. Yeah. It's also going to be make-or-break for the organization. Yeah, I mean, we made all the excuses for Sam Darnold saying that how dysfunctional the Jets had or have, have been and how negligent they have been in putting – um, resources around him. Now he goes down there, he reunites with his favorite target of all time, Robbie Anderson, a guy that can stretch the field, uh, Christian McCaffrey, the human Swiss Army knife, a guy that can do it all. And he has weapons. And also he has a very young defense that's going to be able to give him the ball back. This is a make-or-break year for Sam Darnold. And I think he's going to play very, very well. And he's also playing for the right for them to pick up his option, you know, which I believe they picked up his option. But he's trying to get a long-term contract. Yeah. Is everybody in his class have proven, or uh, two quarterbacks in his class, has proven that they're franchise quarterbacks. When you think about Lamar Action Jackson, they may be getting anywhere from 40 to $45 million. And we know Josh Allen, it's only a matter of time before he gets his money I think Sam Donald wants to be able to put up be put up there and I think he shows everybody that he can play at that level and he is a franchise quarterback Bart Scott Jason Fitz in for Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin on ESPN Radio presented by Progressive Insurance all of our guests join us on the Goodyear hotline you just mentioned the Ravens and Lamar Jackson like I don't think there's anything left that needs to be done to see that Lamar Jackson is worth whatever payday Lamar yeah. Jackson wants. But this is sort of that moment of excitement that comes, right? Like if you're a Ravens fan, you're looking at it right now saying, hey, we've answered the quarterback question. We've got a really talented roster. Yeah. That we were having the debate on this show earlier about whether or not the Steelers are going to be that good. You're not a big believer in the Browns at this point. We don't know enough to know if Joe Burrow is going to be back from injury. Like, right. if you're the Ravens, you got to be looking at this right, saying this is this is a year for us. Well, this is your window, and I mean, even if they pay, if they if they decide this year to say, hey, we're going to pay Lamar Jackson you really won't feel the impact of whatever extension they give them because it's going to be an extension. So it's going to be like, okay, it's added on, it's prorated. But the next year, then you start feeling the heat, and then he's going to start losing people. And you're going to have to say, okay, can Lamar you know, carry a team with not as many weapons? Now, they've done a good job because they went out and they got young, explosive um, receivers through the draft in the last couple of years. They, have, they don't have to pay Hollywood. I forget who's the guy that they got from Minnesota. He's, his mind is slipping me right now. But, you know, they have him. They have Sammy Watkins, you know, who's a, a pro it year trying to prove that he can get another multi-year deal but the fact that you know they really haven't addressed the pass rushing situation and I believe they haven't spent that money because they want to make sure that they can sign Lamar Jackson because no matter what you know the 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 cost is going to only continue to go up now I wonder if they do sign Lamar Jackson what that contract structure is going to look like right because he's a guy that you don't think like Josh Allen who's built sturdy who's going to be able to be around for 15 years you always get concerned that one of these times either Lamar Jackson is going to be running he's going to blow his ACL out or he's going to sustain a, a, a devastating hit because they rely on him so much. So if I'm them, I'm putting him in a short incentive based contract, not a, the same one that I'm going to give Josh Allen. I want to get him signed up at at least a six year five year minimum deal. Lamar Jackson maybe a four year extension. Uh, by the way, the Minnesota wide receiver Rashad Bateman. Yeah, uh, Bateman. Uh, and yeah, and you know, I, I, I look at that from Lamar's standpoint and say I understand what you're saying from a team standpoint. Hey, this is what works. If I'm Lamar I'm taking the exact opposite approach right now, though, like because you never know in life and because, you know, for for him, he's going to look at it and say, I want to protect myself, protect my yeah. family like next man up. I can't imagine Lamar wanting anything other than epic money. This is why like no, it I, can be epic. Right. But it, you, you give yourself an hour instead of making it the Mahomes 10 year half a billion dollars. You say, you know what? I'm going to give you. $45 million. I'm going to give you more than Dak because you are, you've proven that you're the MVP of this league, so that means that you're better than Dak Prescott. So we're, I'm going to give you $45 million a year, but how about four-year extension, $45 million, um, the minus the two, carry three times pi. That's, Bunch of money. You know, that's $180 million, right, in four years. That's a lot of money. And if you exceed it, we'll tear it up at the year three or year four because it's, a, it's an extension, year four, and we'll do it again. But I can't put myself at risk with a 
a quarterback that can't do his the, the, the thing that he does best because he sustains an ACL or something like that. Well, one of the teams I'm most excited to see is the Bills this year. They come Ooh. in as a front runner with a lot of excitement. Josh Allen, you mentioned. Mike in Louisville calling the show. Mike, I know you've got Bills thoughts. What do you got, man? Thanks for calling the show. Hey, so uh, what I was wondering is with Matt Breida being signed, uh, as a real pickup in the off season for the backfield, what I want to know is, do we think that the Bills might try to make a training camp sign, uh, you know, a roster cut, or even make a trade during uh, training camps for a fringe starter? Maybe pick up somebody who's going to be a cap uh, cap casualty for another team. I mean, that's always happens, right? First of all, you want to give everybody that's in there an opportunity, and you hope that everybody can stay healthy. And you never know, like, what guy is going to be, you know, maybe third on the depth chart that's going to show and take that big leap. And you don't, you don't know that. You don't know that until you show up. But you can never have enough quality running backs in this league. You never really have to pay premium dollar for running backs because if you get a good one, you can get a good one for three, four million dollars, especially one year deals. And, um, you know, so you wait to see what falls to you, right? But I think they're in the driver's seat. You think about what they were able to do to kind of solidify uh, that, that defensive line, Boogie Basham coming in. Yeah. They went out and got the kid from Miami as well. They pair him with Ed Oliver. You know, they, they saw what Tampa did. And they saw that if they're going to get past Mahomes, they got to get him off his spot. And now that Mahomes and, and the Kansas City Chiefs have improved their roster, you got to improve your skill set to get to him because it's going to be a little bit more difficult now that you have Orlando Brown Jr. out there on the side. All this football talk because today camps are reporting for the Cowboys and the Steelers. Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who save with Progressive save over $700 on average. Steelers are on everybody's right, mind on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Bart Scott, Jason Fitz, in for the guys. And we're going to head over to the Goodyear Hotline where we're joined by Brooke Pryor, ESPN Steelers reporter. She's out at Heinz Field. Brooke, always appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. A lot of conversation about Ben. He shows up in a shirt that says different. I mean, does he seem different this year? You know, I think he has to be different. His whole thing is he's another year removed from this elbow surgery. That's huge. I mean, last year he he wouldn't admit to it in the season, and that's understandable. You know, he wants to come out and say, no, he's fine. The elbow is not an issue. But when you look at uh, just how he performed, the deep ball was not as accurate as it had been in the past. He had gone, uh, he was, he completed only 29% of passes at 20 plus air yards. That's below his career average of 35%. So for Ben, the biggest thing that has to be different is his elbow. I think, and I think that it will be another year removed from surgery. I I think that that plus the fact that he was able to have a full off season that wasn't just focused on rehab. I think that that's going to pay dividends when we get into the 17 game regular season, he's going to be healthier. He already feels stronger. And we talked to him after practice today and I'm interested to see exactly how he says he's feeling after this summer. You know, it's crazy to say, but can a, and a guy that's a two-time you know, Super Bowl MVP, can he possibly feel the pressure of having something to prove? You know, I, I think so. Ben Roethlisberger is a guy that after the way the season ended last year, and he told me when I asked him after a game where he didn't play well, he said, Brooke, you know what? I'm just not good. I just didn't have it. And I think knowing that, He wants to show that he does still have it. There is pressure there. He wants to end on on the right foot. He doesn't want to to go out with his his head hung, his shoulders shrugged. He wants to go out with the Super Bowl ring, and that's what this team expects every year. That's what he wants to see every year. It's obviously not realistic every season, but he came back for a reason, and I think that he feels the weight of that pressure that he wants to deliver one more ring in what will likely be his final season in Pittsburgh. Well, that was my question. His likely his final season in Pittsburgh, but is Big Ben, who's always kind of flirted with the idea of kind of hanging it up, as we know that you know that that injury report is pretty pretty in depth. Uh, is it any indication that he wants to play much longer than just this season and continue his career somewhere else? You know, I actually I asked him about that, and the one time that we have talked to him this off season, I said, "Is this your last season?" And he was kind of coy, kind of vague about it, said, well, I approach every season like it's my last season. But when you look at just the laundry list of injuries that he's had and significant ones like that elbow injury, I think that, you know, yes, he, I think, would like to continue playing as long as he can, but he's got to get through this season with the 17-game regular season and see how his body feels. 
and then maybe make that determination. But this is a guy that, again, if this year doesn't end up the way that he wants it, I know that you know the, the organization would obviously like him to retire a Steeler. I think he would like to retire a Steeler. But he's never going to come out and say, okay, I'm going to take one victory lap and then I'm done because he is that kind of just ultimate competitor that he wants to go out on top doing whatever it is that he can to make that happen. With that being said, Brooke, the chances that the Steelers are bad enough, even if the wheels fall off for Big Ben, they're not going to be bad enough to be picking in the top five by any estimation, right? So what does their long-term future at quarterback actually look like? Right, and that is where it definitely gets murky because they they signed Mason Rudolph to an extension. They've got him for at least another season. He's the only quarterback under contract in 2022. So he is the guy right now, but that doesn't mean that he's the guy in 2022 necessarily because they do have Dwayne Haskins. Uh, Haskins is kind of fighting for that number three role with Josh Dobbs. Maybe he makes a play to to supplant Mason Rudolph at number two. Um, But I think that the Steelers are going to first try to develop the quarterbacks they have on the roster right now before going out to get one in the draft. Because like you said, they're not going to have a top five pick and Sam Howell isn't going to fall to them at wherever they are, you know, mid to late range, which, you know, that's where they hope that they're picking. But I think that that they really, instead of drafting a quarterback this year, they signed Dwayne Haskins. That was a low risk, high reward if it pays off situation. And he is their answer to the quarterback, at least conundrum, right now where they hope that he could eventually be an answer but yeah that's definitely a situation to watch going forward because there are no concrete answers in Pittsburgh for Ben Roethlisberger's successor. Brooke we appreciate your time and your insight my friend thank you thank you so much for hanging out with us. You got it thanks guys. That's Brooke Pryor on the hot on the Goodyear hotline brought to you by Goodyear helping you discover the road ahead Goodyear more driven this is the the conundrum as Brooke said that the Steelers find themselves in because I believe that they're going to be an okay team. You know, I said earlier that okay. uh, yeah, they're going to be okay. Like they're going to be okay. I don't think I, I don't have the same belief in Big Ben that you do, and that's the mostly Pittsburgh Steelers. Man, they never had a losing record under Mike Tomlin. Okay, what so are you talking about? So in in a seventeen game season, if they finished nine and eight and missed the playoffs, they were okay, right? Yeah, this team is a team that you know. Did they win the division last year? Yes. Okay. No, I, listen. I keep I keep having this argument with people, and I and I hate that I'm the one that's defending Big Ben because it kind of makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Being that I'm a Raven, but like I think we got to put a little bit more respect on him. We we make excuses for everybody that's coming off of injuries. Understand that? Oh well, he had ACL. It takes 21 months for that for him to come back for that. So now we make no excuses for Big Ben, especially when he had this. I knew he was throwing like short passes just because he that was extension of the run game because they didn't have a run game. But when you look at listen, if you look within that division. And you ask yourself some very important questions, right? Who has the best receiver in that division, right? I would probably say that Chase Claypool, ascending that that he takes the next step this year, is the best receiver in the division, right? You say, who has the best pass rusher in the division? Well, I would say T.J. Watt, as great as Miles Garrett is, has been a better pass rusher in the last couple of years, especially when he's healthy, right? And then you say, okay, best linebacker, Devin Bush, best impact um, defensive player. I would probably say Mika Fitzpatrick is probably arguably the best defender within the division, right? All things point to that the better roster is the Pittsburgh Steelers within the division. Like maybe not the best offensive lineman, but other than that, they win the argument when you're trying to pick best players at certain positions within the division. So here's the thing. I I think, number one, let me say this, because every time we ever talk about the Steelers, the amount of people that tweet that ESPN hates the Steelers, I got to be clear on this. The Steelers get great ratings, so the the company would love for the Steelers to be great. Like, I I would love for the Steelers. I don't care. When have they not been great in recent years, though? Well, no, absolutely. Now, Vegas has set the odds makers. I believe William Hill has their odds right now. uh, Over and under at nine. So the understanding, like, that's, that's... That's the playoffs. That's... Well, it, it, I mean, nine and eight in because we're a seventeen game season uh, series. I should uh, oh, season. Uh, that's yeah. the right word. Um, but that doesn't put them you, right now. If you had to bet your house on uh, your house, not mine, uh, Steelers or the Ravens to win the division, who are you taking? I would go. Maybe listen. I, I got a little concern with the fact that the Ravens haven't addressed the pass rushing position yet, and I know they're probably waiting for that. They're probably waiting for Justin Houston. They probably got wink wink deals with some of these you know veterans out there. But I, it's a push, man. For me, it's a push. 
I mean, I, I guess I just look at as much benefit of the doubt as you're giving the Steelers roster. And, and I don't disagree with a lot of what you said. I don't think that every piece that you mentioned there is that much better than what is offered by the rest of the division. And the quarterback will be, in my mind, a liability. I don't think Big Ben, and, and, and I hear you with the benefit of the doubt, but he's 39. And that has to play into it. Like, 39 elbow procedure quarterback. Like, you have to look yeah. at some of that at some point and say, okay, I mean, this isn't elbow procedure now going on probably 18 months, right, where you feel like you have trust in it, right? You've been able to throw with it. You've been able to adjust the way you, you have, to, have to play with your new injury. You know, your mechanics are back right, right, because you've had a good offseason, right? So for me, like, we, we sit here and we applaud. We applaud. Clap, clap. Like Tom Brady's 44 damn years old, and we applaud that. And then – it becomes a negative for Ben Roethlisberger, but who's five years you younger. You can't, you can't, like, you can't put everybody else to Tom Brady. Like, he's he's a unicorn. To your point both earlier, both Hall of Famers, correct? He, he's a unicorn. Both, like, ha- both Hall of yeah, Famers, but you, correct? But there's still going to be variance within that. Like, yeah, but Brett Favor, you know, played late in his career to that level, right? He's still about Brett Favor's career. I don't know when when Brett retired, but I remember the Minnesota Vikings version of Brett Favre was pretty damn good. The New York Jets version of Brett Favre was pretty good before he tore his bicep tendon or muscle, right? And he was able to come back. So why don't we expect Big Ben, who's shown you that he's an elite talent, and why do we expect him to be able to get back? On the mountaintop. Look, right now, and I, I finally pulled it up, William Hill Sportsbook right now has over and unders right now. Baltimore at 11 wins, Cleveland at 10 and a half wins, Pittsburgh at eight and a half. Vegas isn't wrong very often. Yeah, but they can be wrong one or two right. games. Yeah, well, I, I, I get that, but they'd have to be wrong one or two games all the way across the board. I don't think it's absurd to look at Pittsburgh and say, hey, with a quarterback that isn't, that doesn't, uh, players always use yeah. the eye test, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. always the discussion. Players are like, yeah, but I watch the games, which I totally respect. But the eye test on this one says Big Ben didn't look like himself last year. Now he's 39. He's only older. Like, yeah, when you come off of elbow surgery, you shouldn't look like yourself, right? Nobody ever seen a quarterback get Tommy John surgery, but we know what happens, what happens in baseball. Right? What happens? How many months is it for baseball? And they put them on a pitch count, right? They usually put pitchers when they come back from Tommy John on a pitch count, right? An uh, innings restriction. Big Ben wasn't on innings restriction. They had him throwing 50 damn times but a damn Mike game. Mike Tomlin's but, supposed but, to be a great coach that gets benefit of the doubt. He had so. no choice. He had no running game. So, listen, he's saying, Ben, I'm going to make you throw it, but I ain't going to make you throw it far. And when Ben would have to push it down the field, he didn't have the muscle memory. He had the issue. He didn't have the strength and the endurance to continue to throw the ball and push it well through the wind, cut through the wind. Understand what division and what region they play in. They play in Pittsburgh, now, and they go to the mistake by the lake once a year. Yeah, I'm just – and through all of this – Why am I defending the Steelers? I know. It feels, it feels awkward to have a Raven defend the Steelers. Through all of this, to me, the, the Steelers are a seven- or eight-win team in my mind, and that's going to be – that's going to keep them out. They're an eight-win team. I'll say that. They're an eight-win team. Eight and nine. That begins 17 games. With schedule. the extra game? Yeah, eight, with the nine, extra game. They nine all day, minimum. That's the basement for the Steelers. Nine. Wow. All right, coming up, was Aaron Rodgers' latest title with the Bucks his last in Wisconsin? That's next, KJ and Z on ESPN Radio and Sirius XM Channel 80. Coming up tomorrow on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, Pro Football Hall of Famer Ray Lewis as our countdown to the NFL season continues. Ray Lewis with Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN News. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like choosing to listen to another episode of your favorite podcast. And with our top-rated app, you can deposit checks and transfer money anytime, anywhere, making Capital One an even easier decision. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Capital One N.A. Member FDIC. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com.
One one Flores hits a high drive left field. This one is gone, and the Giants have gone ahead in the ninth inning. His first career hit against Kenley Jansen was a bomb, a two-run homer. Three to two Giants here in the ninth. KNBR on the call, Sports Center right now. It was the game of the night. In Major League Baseball, the Giants and Dodgers, both teams entered looking to be the first to 60 wins in the majors this year. The Dodgers had a 2-1 lead in the ninth, but the Giants tagged three off closer Kenley Jansen Jensen to win 4-2. The Giants were 0-25 for when trailing, entering the ninth before yesterday. Jensen now has dropped his last two saves over the course of the week. Dodgers fans, very mad. Moving on to the NHL. Release the Kraken! God, it just let's get Kraken. There's so many things here. The Seattle Kraken have made their 30 picks. The NHL's newest expansion team officially filled out their roster as the expansion draft was held last night. Notably, goalie Chris Drieger from the Florida Panthers, whose 93 save percentage is the best of any goalie over the last two seasons. So congratulations to Seattle to join in the league. Next up, a little college football news. Both Texas and Oklahoma. For once, they're working together. But this is not good news for Big 12 fans. They want to leave. They want to join the SEC. After hearing the reports, Texas A&M Athletic Director Ross Bjork said, quote, we want to be the only SEC program in the state of Texas. There's a reason why Texas A&M left the Big 12, which I totally respect, by the way. I want the Raiders to make the playoffs, too. We just don't always get what we want. Sports Center is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Straight Talk Wireless has rolled out. 5G coverage nationwide. And you can get a Samsung Galaxy A32 5G for only $299 with no contract. All on America's best network. Straight Talk Wireless 5G capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. All eyes are going to be on Aaron Rodgers. Jordan loved the Green Bay Packers and how they mend a broken relationship. The question is, where does the leverage really lie? I mean, are we, are, are we really going to say that the Packers will eventually fold at this poker table? I'm not sure that that's, it's that simple. It's Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Bart Scott, Jason Fitz in for the guys we're presented by Progressive Insurance. Let's head straight over to the Goodyear hotline where we're joined by our buddy Tim Hasselbeck, ESPN NFL analyst. Tim, always good to see you, my friend. I mean, when you, when you look at the Aaron Rodgers situation, it's easy to say he holds all the leverage, but I guess – does he? I mean, realistically, the Packers can tell him to go home and take a bunch of money back. Yeah, I would agree with you. I don't know that he holds all the leverage because, well, you know, Aaron wants to win, right? We've, we've talked about this not being about the money. He still wants to win, and he's playing football at such a high level. You would think that there's still a desire to play football and have success. So with that being the case, his only option is Green Bay. It's a little bit like the joke Tom Brady kind of threw at him prior to their golf match saying like, you know, you're unhappy, but you don't have any options. So look, he has some leverage in the sense that Green Bay is not a great team without him. But beyond that, I'm not positive what his leverage is because his best chance for success is still in Green Bay. So to, let's, let's play, play mediator for us, right? What's the compromise? Mm-hmm. How, can they, how can they figure something out where they can compromise where both parties get something that each, of, each other wants? Yeah, I, I don't know what else um, Green Bay necessarily wants from Aaron. I mean, think about this. In the last three years, he's thrown 99 touchdowns and nine picks. Like, his production over the last three years is – We've never seen it before, quite honestly. It's never been done. So, you know, I don't know what else Green Bay wants from him other than, hey, just be happy. Like, if I'm the mediator in this, look, I think you basically, if you're the Packers, you need to kind of basically, you know, you're good looking, we're ugly, you're smart, we're stupid, like, you're amazing, we're not. Like, you just have to basically say, Aaron, Aaron, you're the guy. You are everything. Like, we're sorry, we screwed up, we did that. We need you to come back and play really well. I mean, that, that's really, I think, the only way that this happens. I, I don't see Aaron in any type of situation being like, hey, I, I'm just, I'm forgiving you for how you handled the situation of drafting my eventual like, I, I just, I don't see that happening. I see Aaron going back and playing for the Packers and really, you know, kind of being miserable to all the guys that he feels like did him wrong. So, 
what does that say to Jordan Love? Because if they sign, you know, Aaron Rodgers to a reportedly, we know that's funny money, right? And you're know, prorating the, the contract when you give somebody an extension. That really wasn't a five year extension, but that was 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 a way to prorate the money so that they can sign potentially Devontae Adams. But what does that say to a young Jordan Love saying, "Hey, the Aaron Rodgers is going to be around for maybe one or two more years, and you may not ever get an opportunity to prove to us that you could be a franchise quarterback." Yeah, it stinks. It's like it makes Jordan Love probably feel like I got drafted into a bad situation. I mean, think about how some of these other guys, you know, the situations they get drafted into. So, you know, Patrick Mahomes gets drafted to Kansas City. They have a starter. But he handles it a certain way, and there's kind of a plan in place for him to take over. And, um, you know, you look at, like, many of these situations, when guys get drafted in the first round, you can kind of see how it's going to play out. You know, Aaron's been pretty candid about it. Look, he threw a wrench in their plans by playing so well. I mean, that that's what happened. So, look, I... I don't know. For, for me, I, when I look at this situation, I thought that, you know, when the, at the time they drafted Jordan Love, I thought it was a, a minimum a year too early. That's what I thought back then. It was probably more than a year too early when I look at it now. They, they just jumped the gun on it, and they didn't handle it the right way by talking to Aaron about it. Now, you would think that in some situations, you know, you, you, those, you know, kind of hurt feelings could be, could be fixed, could be mended, but... We've seen with Aaron, Aaron just doesn't seem like he's going to, you know, he's willing to say, all right, I'm going to bury it. It's almost like, look, no, I want you out. I want you gone. Get out of here. I don't want you, I don't want to be working in the same building as you. Let's move on and and do it that way. I'm not sure that that's going to happen. So I just think it's a situation where people are going to end up working together because they are each other's best option and they're not going to necessarily like each other. I just feel like that is the situation in Green Bay. We're talking to ESPN NFL analyst Tim Hasselbeck. Jason Fitzbart's got in for the guys. So let's have you play mediator on our own debate this morning as we've been sort of back and forth on Big Ben (laughs) and what to expect from Big Ben this season. What do you expect from Ben Roethlisberger this year? I expect Ben to play well. Like, I don't think Ben's going to be in the MVP conversation. I don't think Ben (laughs) is going to completely fall off a cliff. Like I, I do. Th- I think it is a little premature to just say to, to write Ben Roethlisberger off. You know, last year coming off of an elbow surgery on a team that could not run the football at all, he threw 33 touchdowns and 10 picks. His team won the first 11 games. They kind of you know got you know unlucky with what happened with a COVID outbreak in Tennessee that moved their bye week and they faded at the end of the season. And a lot of people that pointed at well, you know, he doesn't have the arm strength anymore. Well, week 16 against the Indianapolis Colts, you know, he throws the ball 49 times for over 340 yards, three touchdowns and no picks against a playoff team and a very good defense. So, look, I I think Ben is good enough to play, you know, winning football. And you look at whether it was Peyton Manning or whether it was John Elway, guys can win Super Bowls when they're not at their physical best in their career. Like, we've seen it happen. So, look, I I think Ben's going to have a good year. I I think the talent around him is good. The offensive line needs to come together. I think Mike Tomlin's a great coach. I I, I think that, you know, if he can coach Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph to an 8-8, you know, record, then Ben Roethlisberger with a, you know, 3-to-1 touchdown-to-interception ratio, I think he can win easily more than half of his games. You have made Bart Scott insufferable. Basically, you're telling him, I get the dog. That's basically what you tell him. I get the dog in a divorce. Oh. Thanks a lot, Tim. I appreciate that. Tim, you have made my whole morning <laughs> Listen, tougher. Bart, I, Bart, here's what I'm saying, Bart. Bart and I, and I'm get, Bart, you know that organization. You had to yes. face them a bunch, yes. okay? Kevin Colbert does a really good job. There's been a lot of turnover there, but those teams put talent on the field. And I think you put talent on the field with a good coach, a coach that – it wins at least half of his games, like in a quarterback that isn't going to kill you in terms of just awful, awful turnovers. Like I, for me, I just am like I, I'm going to be late to that party that Mike Tomlin can't get a winning record and 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 sneak into the postseason and have a chance with a future Hall of Fame quarterback. I'm I'm going to be late to that party that 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 team has done. Any unlike any relationship I've ever been in, the great thing about this seat is I get to have the last word. You're both wrong. That's all I'm saying, Tim. No, I appreciate your time, my friend. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, be safe. Be well. Enjoy the rest of your summer, brother. 
See you guys. Uh, you know what? Yeah, summer's over with for him. It's football season. I know, I know. Training camp, baby. I mean, we is all, gonna, all hands gonna, on deck. It's going to be a morning. All right. We want you guys to chime in. We've been talking about training camp all day. 888-SAY-ESPN. 888-729-3776. That's where you can get in on the conversation. We're going to let you do it next. 888-SAY-ESPN. 888-729-3776. Who are you most looking forward to seeing in training camp? Who do you have your eye on? It's the first day of NFL training camp, first day of school. So who are you excited to see return? We'll let you guys take over. But first, Bart has this from Goodyear. Every move we make pushes us forward, whether it's on the track, the court, or the field. Movement is how we make our impression on the world. It's part of who we are. And when we pursue it with everything we've got, it shows us who we'll become. Every move we make, every road we choose to go down, every mile marker we pass takes us to a new place. The world just how far we can go. Good year. More driven. Hey, it's Greeny, and after the Bucks became the latest team to snap a long championship-free drought, the question is, which will be the next to do it? We'll have that answer, and so will you. See you then. It's Greeny, starting 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. Hey, this is Bomani Jones. What's your favorite podcast? Let me tell you why that'll be number two after you listen to mine. Three times a week, I'm going to challenge you to keep up with me as I discuss topics from the latest in technology and music and people getting dunked on. Also, you'll get the very best analysis of the games and we watch them with encyclopedic level historical connection. Plus, we have got a community of guests that you'll feel like are your closest friends in no time. Listen and subscribe to The Right Time with Bomani Jones Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, this is Zach Lowe. Check out my podcast, The Low Post, where I talk to people in and around the NBA about everything going on in the basketball world. The one and only Nikola Jokic, the most watchable, telegenic player in the NBA. Players, trends, under the radar teams, everything. I am a longtime holder of all the Devin Booker stock I can buy. And I'm not cashing it in because I think he's going to keep getting better. Listen and subscribe to The Low Post wherever you listen to podcasts. The worst takes you can have in radio, frankly, they always tell you is maybe, but (laughs) that might be the most appropriate take when it comes to all things Cowboys right now as we try and figure out how good the Cowboys can be, remembering that they addressed what they thought was their biggest issue going into last season by making wholesale coaching changes, and then they lost their quarterback. Still so much to figure out. It's Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM, Channel 80. Jason Fitz sitting with Bart Scott, and we're asking you guys to chime in. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Who are you most looking forward to seeing in the NFL? And, and like, that's all I'm going to ask. We're going to take some calls. Like, but, but bring me your passion for it because this is such an incredibly fun time to be a fan. Like, bring me your first day of school. You walked in and the girl that you've had a crush on all summer is finally there and you can't wait to see her. Like, I want that level, the love I felt at, you know, 4.45 in the morning when Bart Scott she? came in. Who was she? Wendy? Uh, oh years. man! Who in elementary she? school, yeah, yeah. So you're projecting. A Carissa Villa Via Fania. Ah, Carissa Via Fania. It's amazing oh. how you never forget. Yeah, Carissa. I bet you our callers got some. Got that Oof. one that got away too. We all had one. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Does fifth grade count as got away? I, I, I don't know. We'll yeah. let you guys chime in. But again, it's the way I looked at Bart Scott. At, you know, four fifty this morning when he walked in. Just the the stars in your eyes and knowing that I you're close my eyes wow. only for a moment and in moments. I love that you're you're doing some Kansas. Because, you know, good, good, good violin solo on that. All right. Dustin in Georgia, who are you most looking forward to seeing in the NFL right now? I'm most looking forward to seeing the guy that Mark Scott left off his list, and I couldn't believe he did, which is Jalen Hurst of the Philadelphia Eagles. Ooh. Now, my disclaimer is. Oh, we had a disclaimer, Dustin. Where'd your disclaimer go? Oh, that's the worst when you're qualifying your statement and then the line drops. Dustin, I don't know what your disclaimer is. Are we sleeping on Jalen Hurts? Like, uh, I, I, I don't feel like we are, right? Like, 
We're speed dating with Jalen Hurts, oh. right? He's a second-round draft pick. It is so easy to move on from him, right? He cost you absolutely nothing. He was a luxury pick, right? And, yeah, okay, he came and he played okay. You know, but he's not somebody that you're going to say is a franchise quarterback. If we had question marks about Dak Prescott and all that he, he accomplished and we still didn't want to pay him long-term, what the hell make you think we're going to think about Jalen Hurts three, four years from now? Especially we know that they're flirting, right? They're eyeing somebody. They're Pat rallying Deshaun Watson. Right, they all everything that they did was so they could have the draft equity to be able to make a move for Deshaun Watson if he's cleared. Because we know with all the quarterbacks that they're drafting down in Houston, they understand that they're going to lose him as soon as he can be cleared. That they're not going to win that 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 game of chicken. This isn't the same situation with A. A. Ron and the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I think that the Deshaun Watson stuff is one of the more interesting things the league has ever had to face. In the sense that, and again, everything that's happening is far bigger than football. For the league, according to multiple reports, he won't even be deposed until February. So there's a very good chance that Deshaun Watson will sit out the entire season with no idea what's going on or if he's even touchable. And then there will be, if he is cleared and he's innocent, there will be a massive bidding war to get him to come in. So, yeah, that's a... Let's look at recent sports, right? Let's look at what the the, the Brooklyn Nets did, right? They signed KD knowing that he wasn't going to play because they knew if he he had an opportunity to pick and he was healthy, he, he may not pick you. So sometimes you can speed up the process by taking a chance on somebody. Uh, hard to take a chance on somebody in my mind right now with the allegations specifically Deshaun has on him. But, well, innocent uh, until proven guilty. Yeah, so. it, it, it's, uh, I think that's why the legal system just has to play out. I wouldn't be surprised to see the league put him on an exempt list and he's just stuck in a holding pattern. In the meantime, let's go to, uh, to Fred in Utah. Fred, who are you most looking forward to seeing in the NFL this year? My, my man, long time no hear from you, brother. What up? I want to see Cordarius Tony, and I want to see uh, Zaquan coming back from his injury. Yeah. But I know that Urban Meyer wanted Cordarius Tony, so I love the way Urban picks his offensive players. So he knows that kid is nice. So I can't wait to see what that kid can do in the NFL. Yeah, man, you talk about Thunder Thighs coming back, and he's at the best part of his career. He's searching for a new contract. He's trying to get, get that uh, McCaffrey money at $16 million a year, right? And he's coming off injury, and I always love a player that's motivated by the money because for the, the, the quote, uh, Thuggers, Ruggers, Bones, is for the love of money. And you think about Tony. Tony reminds us of a bit of a little Percy Harvin. He's a guy that can do it all. So imagine Saquon Barkley and him in some type of, you know, wildcat RPO putting the defense in a jackpot. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm lucky to get to cover a lot of college football for the network, and I thought Tony uh, was one of the better draft picks and bat, better draft fits. Uh, if you have a young quarterback you believe can take you to the next level, I believe you have an obligation with that quarterback to get as many playmakers around them as possible. Tony is a great example of that and somebody that can, in today's you know buzzwords, but in today's uh, world of the NFL, can be really versatile. So I think it gives them the chance to do a lot in a lot of different formations. So that's a really good call. Joe in West Virginia, uh, what are you most looking forward to seeing in the NFL? Uh, Trevor Lawrence and Tra- Travis Etienne. I think they're going to make headlines in training camp and going to do really well in the regular season, but I'm terrified that their fate is going to rely on Urban Meyer, and I have no faith in him <laughs> for the NFL. How many times are we going to see him irk and jerk um, Lawrence for Tim Tebow to come in at some wildcat goal line, let me see if I can fall forward for one yard to get the first down as he gets up and pumps his fist and then put that pressure on Lawrence if he, if he struggles. That's one of the things that I, it really bums me out because Trevor Lawrence is so special. It bums me out. I think there's a better chance that the Jags fail Trevor Lawrence than Trevor Lawrence fails the Jags and that's unfortunate for Urban Meyer obviously Uh, there's just a lot of variables in that situation I would love to see him be successful Brian in Florida what do you got who are you most looking forward to seeing hey good morning guys Uh, I want to see what's going on with Josh Allen they have a uh, you know some good continuity in the coaches good continuity in the offensive line they got an upgrade with Emmanuel Sanders but I'm just curious in whether Josh can, can, can continue his upgrade or whether he's going to you know level off or fall back. Brian, thanks for the call. And Bart, I'll ask you quickly. Like the the Bills have insulated him so much. They've been so so. They've taken such good care of the way he's perceived. Yeah. Now they're front runners, and everybody's got all eyes. Does that change anything? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a different tempo when you realize that you're going to get every team's best because they're trying to make a name off of you. And I don't know if they're ready for that or used to that. This will be the first time where they're going to be the hunted, not the hunters. And um, I think they did a great job in supporting the team by upgrading the pass rush because that was the problem. They had the outside lockdown corner. They had the good you know, interior lineman, but now they finally got somebody that can put pressure on the quarterback. All right, we're going to keep letting you guys chime in. Triple eight, say ESPN, 888-729-3776. Looking forward to a fun, interactive morning. You tell us who you're most looking forward to seeing in the NFL player team. Either way, we'll let you keep chiming in throughout the course of the rest of the show. Also, a goat actually saying he belongs in the goat conversation. You'll hear about it next. KJ and Z on ESPN Radio. Hey, this is Bomani Jones. What's your favorite podcast? Let me tell you why that'll be number two after you listen to mine. Three times a week, I'm going to challenge you to keep up with me as I discuss topics from the latest in technology and music and people getting dunked on. Also, you'll get the very best analysis of the games and we watch them with encyclopedic level historical connection. Plus, we have got a community of guests that you'll feel like are your closest friends in no time. Listen and subscribe to The Right Time with Bomani Jones Podcast wherever you get your podcasts.